Hey YouTube, in my first video I'd explained that I'd been born into this Jehovah's Witness cult but had left at my first opportunity. It was only when my children were approached by Jehovah's Witnesses that I realised I still had some of the selfish mentality they encourage. I had for many years been content just to rescue myself and leave the rest to their fate. But that is wrong and it shouldn't take a threat to my children for me to suddenly care. But it comes to me that it is evil that my kids have never known their paternal grandparents because a cult doesn't like them. Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be the most loving people on earth, but it is the people outside the Kingdom Hall who demonstrate love and natural affection. It is sad that although I left the cult, my children are suffering by having half of their family totally ignore them. What have my children done? And like I've said in an earlier video, we can't depend on the sheep to free themselves. So that's my motivation. So now to business. There are four key areas of concern for any business. These areas being income, trading costs, direct ever overhead and legal compliance. And I'll look at compliance first. Australia has instituted a law that appears to be kryptonite to Jehovah's Witnesses. Simply put, they support the Jehovah's Witness right to free speech and evangelism, but anyone working with children they are not related to must be background checked. Religious activities have proved to be effective cover for predatory paedophiles. This background check measure provides employment and tax revenues whilst protecting children and making it harder for Jehovah's Witnesses to operate. The Jehovah's Witnesses totally mishandled this situation because it put them in a position of having to choose between following God's directives as they see it or obeying someone that will put them in prison. I would suggest that we lobby to bring that sensible law to our own countries with one further addition. I'd suggest we still protect the right to free speech, but protect the householder by lobbying to have all organised, unsolicited callers be background checked as well. This protects the elderly and the vulnerable from abusive doorstep practices whilst generating income streams for government. This would not be a direct assault on Jehovah's Witnesses, but make it hard for them to operate in the way that they feel makes them special and unique to God. This would remove their unique selling point. This measure would also help to curtail certain doorstep crimes and protect householders' privacy and peace of mind. The apostate community needs to brainstorm ideas that generate red tape and that give the sheep a, legit a legitimate legal reason not to preach in this way. If the measures are only seen to incidentally affect the JW Org, but help the community and raise cash, it may well be welcomed by government. And there are ways to make new draft laws attractive to government, which I won't go into here. These vary by area to area. Another matter that would devastate the Jehovah's Witness organisation, if, if possible, is to bring modern secular standards and methods into the Kingdom Hall. For example, Jehovah's Witnesses advise victims of male domestic violence just to put up with it. This is clearly unacceptable and contrary to having a healthy world. Maybe legislation can be brought to, get, to bear against an organisation that is seen to protect violent people. Another point worthy of exploration is that this organisation effectively receives government support and tax benefits whilst practising discrimination against women or gay people in a way that the general society finds unacceptable. The Mormons changed their practices because of the civil rights legislation and I think this can be brought to bear against Jehovah's Witnesses here too. Basically tie them up in red tape, make the costs of compliance substantial 
and create a secular legal environment that precludes them from hurting other people. It may be possible to ask our governments to request a transparency law prior to recruitment which would serve to protect the householder. As it stands at this time, a strange person with unknown history knocks on your door and tells you about Panda Bear World and makes the sale. You commit to it and get baptised. Then you find out you're not allowed to talk to your family anymore. A small print or honesty law would protect the householder and destroy this organisation. And the beauty of it is that these measures don't name Jehovah's Witnesses directly, but can only be seriously challenged by those with obviously bad motives. And they do not depend on the sheep to rescue themselves in any way. I'm sure people out there have many more ideas on how to tie them up in administration and compliance costs and much more energy than me. So I'm going to look at income reduction, overhead generation and costs of trading in a later video.